What's up guys, I'm Sam with The Daily Prince, and today, in light of the recent lawsuit against Harvard admissions, we're going to be asking students to weigh in on campus diversity. Let's go. I definitely think they're conscious of it. Whether or not I think they should do more, um, I, I feel like for a question like that, you can always do more. Um, maybe the admissions counselors will be even more, um, now that, like they might have been somehow pressured based on this hanging verdict over like Harvard, right. but now that it's cleared, maybe they were already planning to do more, and, and now they have like more of a green light to do so. I always thought that everyone who gets into Princeton deserves to get in, but everyone who doesn't get into Princeton doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't deserve it either. Um, I think that like a big difference would be between equity and equality, where equity is everyone has, you know, equal opportunity to accomplish the same thing, whereas equality is treating everyone the same. So I think that it's a hard balance to strike, but if the university can strive to do that, where they're taking into consideration, you know, the different circumstances which the applications are, applicants are in when they're applying, um, I think it's important for the holistic process to consider work. I think of diversity like less in like ethnic or racial terms and like for me personally like more in like socioeconomic terms. Yeah. And so like I know like there's like a community of like low income or first gen students like being like on this campus and like I feel like that's something like it's like often correlated to race and ethnicity, but like it's also something that race and ethnicity cannot always like define. I Absolutely. Think. So I think um I think Princeton does a pretty really good job actually like offering financial aid and like ensuring that there's like socioeconomic diversity. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then also like regarding like the Harvard's admissions case with like Asian Americans, like I feel like that is unfair, I think, to like think that like you're like just as qualified in some way, but just because of your race or ethnicity, like it somehow disqualifies you for like from like not going to like certain school. Right. It has students that are very great academically and also it's a very diverse community. Um, again, like growing up in a place where it wasn't diverse, I could like feel it and I really did not like it, that environment. And like, I don't know if Princeton could do better because this is where I am and I haven't really been exposed to a lot of campuses. I'm sure it's much better than some and I'm sure it's worse than others, but like, I do think that like, there probably is room for improvement. Like, there's probably room for improvement at every university. I find that the student experience for the black students is still very similar to what we experience. So while the campus is doing a lot of wonderful things, hiring black faculty, expanding and investing in the African American Studies program, um, it is not really addressing power, privilege, and race with the people who need to know the most about power, privilege, and race, which are the students who aren't black students, white students and others, right? So um, whether you're talking about issues of um, male-female relationships and sexual violence and consent, or whether you're talking about um, uh, implicit bias or uh, prejudice, unless you're talking to all the students um, even the most privileged students, um, we're not going to see a lot of change. Of course, we shouldn't discriminate against anybody, right. but there should be some flexibility so that a class can be molded, so that you don't have too many of anything, you know, because right. then it's not diverse. Right. Okay, Libby, I should probably go. Do you think Do you think Princeton has achieved that, or is working their way towards it? Yeah, I, Princeton still has a lot of work to do. Of course. <laughs>